Hey guys, Spartan117GW here today, and we're going to be talking about um, essentially something that I've been wanting to go over for a while, which is what is the best training rifle for you, and specifically airsoft training rifle for you. Depending on who you are and depending on what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish, some of the guns may not work for you, some of them possibly will, right? So it, it, it's kind of dictated by like, are you doing personal training? Are you doing organized like unit training or whatever? So that's kind of who this video is geared towards, whether you're just like a gun guy or you're trying to make a purchase for your, your department or your unit or something. Hopefully this video can help you out. Now, big shout out to Travis Haley because his Airsoft X video, which came out years and years ago, kind of set the bar and really help break down some of the barriers so that people could see you know airsoft is a valid training tool it's also a lot of fun too just depends how you want to use it but if you take it seriously it is just a legitimate training tool as anything else because force on force is literally the kind of that missing link that people don't really get enough of and once you start doing force on force um you realize how many of the things, like maybe things you're doing on the flat range don't translate very well, or maybe they're making bad habits, or you know, one of the many other things. So force and force is arguably the most important, in my opinion, one of the most important factors of shooting and combatives and stuff like that, because that's, that's really sparring, that's where you're gonna get your best training. I mean, that's essentially what it is, it's sparring. Um, so, for people getting into the training side of airsoft, um, it can be kind of daunting because I, I've talked to so many gun guys, but at, you know, going to like different classes, whether it's uh, Haley's class or the Surefire thing I went to recently, a lot of gun guys like they know about airsoft, but they're not very familiar. So you kind of have that new to airsoft compounded by trying to find a specific gun that meets a certain requirements for your training needs kind of thing because so so it's like you know you have both of those working against each other right um, because so you know, just being new to airsoft is daunting in its own and then having to find something that meets those requirements is kind of kind of tricky so I'm here to help solve that problem. So we have a couple different varieties of guns, and I know I don't have a Tokyo Marui uh, NGRS on the table. I have its next best thing, the Distant Cousin, the uh, KWA AEG3 or the PTS CM4 um, ERG. Uh, they're very, very similar. If I had that one on the table, it would kind of be in the similar ballpark. But yeah, the Tokyo Marui, Marui Recoil Shock is a very, very great platform. Uh, but yeah, we'll be going into the uh, disadvantages and advantages of each platform. And real quick, I'm just going to run down so you know which one's which, right? So this is the gas blowback platform. Is the Radian Model 1. Um, that's made from uh, PTS and KWA collaboration. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gun. Um, and this kind of represents the gas blowback category. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there that make great um, gas blowbacks, including Marui, which makes the MWS, and you got GMP, and you got a bunch of other companies as well. Um, and, you know, PTS also makes like the Mega Arm, so there's a bunch of different guns to choose from. So that'll be the representation of the gas blowback for the um, electric recoil shock and ERG category the PTS CM4 is going to be the one kind of representing that uh, licensed electric gun uh, it essentially uses the same engineers who made the NGRS except they upscaled the system to withstand a basically heavier spring and just be a little more robust uh, not to say that you can't upgrade a NGRS recoil shock because you definitely can um, so that's kind of standing in for that category for the PTW guys Got the North American PTW right here, uh, arguably uh, the most expensive gun on the table, but um, this one is the PTW. It's one of the longest standing training platforms, the system of PTW, uh, but we'll be seeing if it holds up to the new competition. And of course, the newest, newest competition, arguably the most evolved airsoft gun that there is currently, um, especially for training, is GBLS. Uh, this is a really cool gun, GDR15. Um, supposed to be meeting GBLS guy later this week too as well. Um, I've got a couple of these. They're really cool. They're not perfect, but they're really, really cool. So without further ado, I'm gonna be breaking down each gun letting you know what I think and then giving you my conclusion uh, at the very end about what I think works for different people. So without further ado, let's jump into the guns. All right guys, so the first category we're gonna look at is gas blowback rifles. 
They're the most realistic functioning. They're a lot of fun to shoot because they have that explosive power and because it's a mechanical trigger, you know, just like a real trigger, it has that really nice instantaneous trigger response because you're just basically letting go an explosion of air which propels the BB or gas. What's cool too is that, like I was saying, that the internals are very, very similar. You have your fire control group, your selector. I mean, it's like you show this to someone with who's familiar with real firearms and for first glance they're going to think it's a real gun uh, but what's really cool is you can see the hammer there you could reset it squeeze and you could feel the mechanical reset of the trigger which is really cool also have the full uh, bolt carrier group and charging handle this is a radian model one so it comes with the radian wrapped on there and you can see the full bolt carrier group right there which is pretty cool right you also have the buffer spring and the buffer weight and everything in the buffer tube and the buffer tubes are for the most part industry-wide they're pretty mil spec um you can even put um real rifle grips on these uh, KWAs as well if you want although the grip that comes with this gun is more than adequate um, what's interesting though is that once you kind of get into the different models is that their hop up unit kind of varies from model to model the hop up unit is essentially the piece in the barrel that the BB passes through that controls what gives the BB backspin, right? So if it has more hop, it'll give it more backspin, less, it'll go low, and then ideally you want to go level, roughly, right? <clears throat> this one basically has teeth in the star chamber that you kind of got to rotate with this tool that comes with the KWAs, but every brand is a little bit different, but just keep in mind, um, those are probably some of the, I guess you could say, weaker points of the gas blowback guns. Um, realism is just off the charts but the, the probably the strongest weak point is probably the magazines the magazines are really really cool um there's a couple different styles especially with this brand the kwa oem ones there's stan eggs and then you have these polymer versions right this is the epm one um but they're a little bit heavy so they're actually heavier than a real fully weighted mag to be honest is a little bit heavier so for you that might be a plus or minus but they're also really expensive like we're looking like the 40 50 and up for a variety of gas blowback brands so it's it's a big investment in that regard because you're probably gonna need more than one of these um and it's yeah it's not cheap right and also gas gas guns they can be kind of finicky like when they run and when they're running great um they're fantastic, right? The super fast trigger response, explosive, super satisfying to shoot, but you start to run into some of the problems that real guns have, like double feeds, <laughs> because you have this bulk carrier group moving back, you have double feeds sometimes, or sometimes the mags might be leaking, or a seal might be going bad in the magazine, so you're gonna have to address that. Um, I mean, things like that, or like BBs chopping, like bolt carrier group just chopping that BB up in half or whatever, and then you got a, a jam, and unlike a real firearm, forward assist does not help when you jam an airsoft gun. <clears throat> um, and also, too, like when training, especially training indoors on hard surfaces, dropping the mags is not very good. You're either going to break the feed lips or you're going to break the base plate. Um, with the stan egg ones you probably won't break the base plate but you might break the v-lips but good thing is that you can you know if you can you can always get more and change them out it's pretty easy to change but it's just something to keep an eye out for so if you're trying to train all day long and you're just dropping them on the ground you might be busting up your mags um, sometimes gas can be a little finicky um, it's not ideal for training in colder weather environments although there are some companies that make green gas it's attuned a little bit better for training in colder environments but rule of thumb is just training in a warm environment is ideally better and once you you know shoot and unload and dump this mag um just just because of the gas coming out and all the expansion whatever yeah the mag gets cold so that'll affect it a little bit until it warms up again so you might need a, like a break in between using these so little finicky things there and that's kind of the trade-off you're getting for the really superb ultimate realism i mean it's just really really fantastic um what you're getting for but yeah so it has its ups and downs these guns typically are in the four to five hundred dollar range Sometimes you can get them a little cheaper if you want a more basic M4, like in the two, three hundred dollar range, uh, and you might be able to get them used for even less. Um, 
kind of depends on the brand but so this one i would really recommend this gun for someone who wants to do individual training and while it is nice for like departments and stuff like that there's a little bit more maintenance that's required and it might not seem as pick up and go for just like here you just hand this to an officer you just hand this to a guy for training he might not understand all the quirks and everything and more prone to breaking it so i would say this is better for someone who's really going to be spending time to individually train with this than so much as a unit organization buy but other than that i mean you're good to go so gas blowback platform still really cool really cool very realistic and very fun to shoot uh but it has its quirks all right, so next up we have the Sistema PTW. Specifically, this is the North American PTW, which is sold by Z-Shot. This uses a split gearbox design. It's an electric gun. This one specifically has the PTW uh, or the PTS PTW gearbox in it, which is kind of nice. Um, realistic in terms of they're basically taking a real receiver and putting an airsoft gun in it. Um, there are other kits that Sistema has made before, but the Nor North American PTW specifically is a real, I believe it's an LMT receiver, that uh, they put um, the airsoft guts in it. So you have the split gearbox in there. Um, you also have the uh, whole system up here. The charging handle doesn't really do anything, but what is kind of cool is that this whole cylinder up here, which is the like, its version of the bolt carrier group, um, you can completely change out and swap if you want to change the power. So if you need to shoot hotter or shoot, or shoot a little softer for CQB or whatever, you can do that. Um, so that's kind of a cool little nuances here with the PTW. Um, essentially, it is an electric gun. Let me kind of put this bad boy back together. There you go. It's an electric gun um, that uh, has a cutoff feature. So when the magazine runs dry, um, essentially you'll get the mushy trigger of the gun stop shooting. You'll have to drop the magazine, reinsert a new magazine, and then hit the bolt catch and then you're good to go. Um, you can see on here that it has really, really beautiful accessories on here. The North American PTW specifically at least came with the Mo Grip, but has the mil specs uh, buffer tube and you can put whatever rail system you want on it. So a lot of customization options there. So this, it's a really, really cool gun. Still effective for training because it has a little bit of the manipulation there. Um, it doesn't have any recoil though. So if you're looking for recoil, this gun doesn't have it. Um, it is also um, pretty expensive. Like we're talking like north of $2,000 expensive. Um, they're not cheap. So there's some people that swear by them. Um, there's like almost like a cult following behind these guns just because this gun makes a very specific sound when it shoots, which is this very specific like whiny shooting, uh, this whiny kind of motor um, sensation. It's just, it just has its own sound. And anytime you hear it, you know someone's rocking a PTW. And this is for the longest time. And even to this day, it's like it said, it has its cult following. It's just like, it's just PTW-ness essentially. But they're still really great guns. They're kind of like, basically super super high-end robust airsoft guns and you can tune them and everything they can become super super accurate and they can shoot really really far once you get all the everything tuned up and everything like that right um the question is is it worth it i would say even though ptw is in its name it's almost better as a gaming rifle and what i mean is like for war games and type stuff because it because of the performance it's got really really great performance you still have enough of the realistic features it's it's robust and because it's basically made out of a real receiver um, but it doesn't have the recoil feature that some people might be looking for especially if they're trying to have a one-to-one -one training rifle now if you're doing force on force like Recoil, like if you're looking for recoil, this might not be the gun for you. If you don't care about recoil, this might be the gun for you. But keep in mind, it also costs as much as a real rifle and maybe even a... I mean, if you have the money to buy this, you almost have the money to buy UTM stuff year-round. Because that's how, that's how expensive this is. But it is a very, very, very nice airsoft gun. So it's kind of to each, you know... To, to each their own essentially but uh very very nice gun just really really expensive but z-shot does some really nice quality work they put this one together i sent them the parts they put together and it's really really a gorgeous rifle so it kind of 
is up to you to justify that cost. This is not kind of the thing that I would recommend like a small department or a unit purchase to buy. It is easy to pick up and go and use this, but it's just the unit cost, it's like, that's high for a department or a unit. Not so bad for like an individual, especially if you're using this for like wargaming and so forth, or even force and force training. Um, but definitely this, this is more than what most departments would want to pay for for a training rifle. So this right here is a really, really cool gun. It's kind of, I like to call it the best balance of all worlds. And it's, its next cousin would be the Tokyo Marui NGRS, which costs a little bit more and some of the materials might be a little bit different because they're using like metals from like Japan and stuff like that. But essentially what this is, this is an electric gun that has recoil, uh, but it also has the cutoff feature, right? So when the gun goes dry, it stops shooting, you're gonna have to reload, hit the bulk catch, and you can re-engage. But if you don't really care about the cutoff feature, you can use standard mags. And then even though these mags look similar, you can look at the top and see that this is just a standard EPM or AEG or Airsoft Electric Gun magazine. And this specifically has some cutoff features built in to work with that extra level functionality with this gun. So this is kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. It's got the recoil, but it's not as realistic as a gas blowback. It has the cutoff features, um, which are really great, but you can use regular mags with it. Um, and you know, it's very easy to pick up and go because you just plug the batteries in and you go, right? So you don't have to worry about the gas finicky so much. The downside is, you don't have a real bulk carrier group. It's, it's basically, you know, it's an airsoft gun, but those extra functionality um, that's built in, it's really, really nice. And you have a really, really gorgeous setup. You have a you know, cool Picatinny system on here, which you can change out if you want. Um, comes with a stock that's capable of holding all the batteries you need, grip, and even comes with the magazine as well. And as you can see, I have this one set up for other accessories as well. So. This gun is pretty dang good, I would say accuracy wise, like in terms of performance, it's depending on how your PTW is tuned, it's in kind of the same ballpark, although your PTW could be like really, really, really tuned and shoot really far and really accurate. For a stock gun, shoots pretty good. You're looking like around like the 200 feet mark or something like that. Um, what is cool though, is that it's relatively affordable, especially when compared to all the other guns on this list. It's in the 380 mark, and you can actually get other versions of this gun with the same recoil system for even less than that. And if you don't care about the recoil system, you can even go down to like the VM4 or AG 2.5, which just has the cutoff feature and doesn't have the recoil. But you know, if you're coming over from the gun side, real gun side, you really want that recoil, then the AG3 or the ERG system is kind of the way to go. When it comes to a unit purchasing these, this is typically what I recommend. Um, it's great for individual use because of the affordability, but that's also what makes it great for a unit purchase or a department purchase because you have something that looks realistic, feels realistic, has close to the same weapon manipulation in terms of you know managing the charging of uh, the the bolt bolt catch right and when the gun goes right reload the bolt catch um but it's affordable so this is a really really good thing and for people who like doing the wargaming thing this is perfect so it really kind of checks all the box well all the boxes the only downside is that when it comes to the internal functionality you know it's not as realistic um it's the next evolution which i would say the gbls is a little more realistic but we'll, we'll get to that uh but overall whether you're wargaming with this thing or you're training with this thing, this is a really, really good choice for a force-on-force -force gun. Um, and just kind of all those different things coming together, price point, functionality, but you can also pick up and go. It's just like, you know, you can just hand this to an officer or a soldier or whoever you're training and um, you don't have to worry about maintenance so much. And from a long-term training, um, perspective especially when you're just handing these out to just different people coming through and training um that makes a difference just be able you got batteries in it you got bbs hand them hand it to them go you don't have to worry about them dropping mags or anything because the mags they won't break when you drop them or anything like that so 
that's definitely really nice. So this is the PTSCM4. Uh, uses the AG3 system from KWA, but uh, there are many other systems like it. And again, like I mentioned before, the Tokyo Marui recoil system is its basically next cousin. Um, those guns are a little bit more expensive. So if for personal use, I would say the NGRS is also another really, really great option. And they're known for a really, really great range and accuracy out of the box. Um, and you can upgrade them. Uh, but, you know, sometimes they're a little bit, they feel their plastic feels a little bit more toyish, or the metal might be a little more brittle. It's just, I don't know, something about guns from Japan, they're just, they feel very plasticky. But other than that, make sure to check this out in the Maruri Recoil Shock if you're looking for something roughly in this category. So this is the most evolved version of the electric gun when it comes to airsoft and for training. It kind of combines the features that the PTW has and the ERG has, right? And with a little bit of from the gas blowback. So as you can see, um, it has a split gearbox design. Um, so very PTW reminiscent, but it's crazy because it also has a full buffer weight and buffer spring back here too. And you have a full bolt carrier group or BCG, right? So it's really kind of combining like a lot of different ideas into one platform. Let me just try to put this back in there. There you go. Uh, and you close it. As you can see there, it assembles just like a real gun and you can even, you know, rack the charging handle and everything. And basically if you pull the charging handle all the way back on this one, and that's why it meets a lot of resistance right here, it actually like pre-cocks the spring. So what's interesting about this gun is it's kind of a unique feature, um, keep in mind too. You can essentially use it like a spring gun if you really had to, right? If for some reason your battery died, you could still shoot the gun. That's kind of more handy for like the war gaming side, but to each their own. Um, also note that if, if it's cocked and you try to shotgun the weapon, it'll shoot. So yeah, if you basically like shotgun it, and you hear the little bang, that's because it, it shoots it before it opens up. So keep in mind, make sure it's clear when you do that. Uh, what's cool about this though, is it has recoil. You know, it has, it has the recoil of the gas blowback gun. It's electric, like the PTW and the ERG, but you still have the full like, you know, magazine functionality just like the gas blowback gun. So it's it's really like a combination of all the best realistic features of all the other guns. Um, one of the downsides is it's still not cheap. It's cheaper than the PTW, which is kind of surprising because there's a lot, there's just so much going on with this thing, right? Um, and I know it has blue accessories on this gun. You could probably request it directly from GBLS if you want to do like a unit buy or purchase or whatever uh, but the guns usually don't come with the blue accessories but it is nice that they sent that one to me so I can kind of show this as a training rifle um, this one comes with full Centurion Arms PTS accessories um, that's all the access to the sights everything comes with it um, which is really really elegant and gorgeous the magazines are a little bit hard to load um, when it comes to using a speed loader and like with the other guns you can either use a standard hand jammer or you can use the Odin Innovations one this one, they make an adapter that goes with the Odin Innovation Speed Loader that'll make your life loading these things way better because without it, loading these mags sucks. And they hold about 60 BBs. So kind of the downside with this. Uh, one thing else to notice or to note is that these guns, um, for some reason or another, I think they were just compensating or trying to overcompensate with the, the realism. The amount of pressure it takes to depress the trigger is a lot. Um, some departments like that because it makes you really think about when you're taking that shot. Um, so you don't just wing the shot, but for even compared to my real ALG defense trigger, it's like, dude, this is like way overkill. I know they're trying to make a realistic trigger, but it's just overkill. Um, so it's like kind of trying to squeeze off Lots of shots on semi in quick succession can be a little bit tough because of that. Um, and also one thing I noticed too is the gun's really loud. Like like the, the gas blowback gun's loud because of the report from the gas, right? This is loud because, you know, it's just like the whole mechanism in here, it's the, the motor and everything, really loud. Like 
I thought the PTW was loud. I thought the ERG was loud. This thing's really, really loud. It's the combination of the whining and also like the mechanics moving around. So it's a, kind of a loud gun. Other than that though, really, really gorgeous, elegant gun. Uh, I would say out of all the guns here, this is kind of like the ultimate training gun. But again, budget considering, um, it's still a little on the high end, even for a consumer. Um, it's a great purchase for someone who wants to get a rifle training for themselves if you can afford it because it's roughly in like the 15 or 1700 uh, dollar mark although usually you can get them with a bunch of magazines already which will save you a little bit of money um, if you have if you're part of a department or a unit that has that green this might be a great option for you because you don't have to worry about dropping the magazines you won't damage the magazine um, Maintenance is just basically kind of lubing, adding like grease to like the bolt and the gun. So it's like maintenance isn't that bad. Um, and it's just very pick up and go. And because it has one-to-one -one manipulation, right? Um, it's very easy for people used to using real guns to pick it up, go and train with it. And it doesn't have the finicky nature with, with temperature that some gas blowback guns can have. Um, and the hop of adjustment, if I remember, is like on the bottom or somewhere of the barrel on this gun somewhere. But um, yeah, the GBLS is a really, really cool gun. It just, it's it's definitely up there. It's it's below the PTW in terms of price, but it's definitely above like the ERG and stuff like that. So maybe your unit can afford this, maybe not. Um, that's really up to you guys. Um, for individual, I think it's great. Um, it's kind of up in the air for unit purchase, but if your unit can afford it, then this is actually a really, really nice platform. Um, so that kind of covers the gambit and hopefully that answers a bunch of your guys' questions. So as you can see, like just going, doing a quick recap, um, the gas blowback rifle, extremely realistic, a little bit finicky in terms of the functionality and it's kind of weather dependent and dropping the mags can't really do that that much. And you, you have to constantly keep buying green gas. With all the other guns, they're electric, which means one-time purchase for the consumable. And you just keep charging and charging and charging. And by the way, I use Titan power batteries for all my electric guns because they are very, very safe. They work really good, they have good output, and they don't puff. They don't have a lot of the features that regular, or a lot of the issues that regular LiPo batteries have. <clears throat> Next up, you have the PTW, which is really, really expensive, but it's a little bit more I guess I could say better for wargaming than this one is. Um, still, still a decent training rifle, but it also doesn't have recoil. But it does have the functionality of the bolt catch uh, when you're reloading. The gun will stop shooting and you have to reload with the bolt catch. ERG is probably the jack of all trades, master of none. Has a little bit of features for every single one, but it's a little more affordable and a little more friendly for unit or department purchase. And still great for individual because of the price point. And the recoil shock falls similarly in that category. The GBLS is probably the most realistic electric gun that you can get. Still a little bit higher on the price point, so it's kind of like upper in that tier. But if you can afford it, it has a lot of really, really great features, but you're basically like the amount of money that you're putting into this is just the same as if you were buying an AR. So keep that in mind. But Overall, what makes Airsoft great, though, is that the consumables are relatively cheap. You know, like buying a rifle, then buying the ammo is two different stories. Overall, buying Airsoft BBs is a lot cheaper than buying UTMs or SIMs, if you can even get those. And getting UTMs can be kind of difficult because you have to be like an authorized UTM trainer or whatever. Uh, and then buying like all those, the bolts and everything isn't cheap and the ammo. We're talking like thousands and thousands of dollars worth of ammo. So while some of these airsoft guns might cost a lot up front, it'll pay for itself over in time. And you'll ultimately what really matters is you're getting the trigger time while you're training. Um, and if you're looking for a realistic weapon manipulation, any one of these will give you pretty good amount of that, what you're looking for. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Um, try to compare all three guns the best as I could. Um, as you can see, there's ups and downs to each one, but one might suit your need better than the other. Although I, I do feel like the CM4 or any of the AEG3 platforms is a really good kind of match or mix of all the benefits um, of all the platforms. So make sure you guys check it out. Also, again, make sure to check out Travis Haley's Airsoft X training video because that kind of really like set the stage for stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. This is Spartan 117GW. I'll see you guys next time.